let me bring her in. Let me bring her in. And then we will conclude this together. Then I am going to play this video straight. I'm going to stretch it. Then we will write down the point and conclude it together so that we will make the time shorter. Um, Marian Heda, you are welcome. Please introduce yourself to Biafrans. They are listening, and I believe they are waiting patiently to see you joining this program, even though I did not tell them, you know, notify them that you will be joining. But I know they are waiting patiently for you. Please kindly unmute yourself and tell them that you are here. Yeah, good afternoon, um, Mazi, George Money. Good afternoon to everyone listening. I must ask you, the people, to pardon my voice. I'm just trying to wake up, so I'm going to sound a little bit hoarse or cracked, but it's okay. Um, as we continue, as the program is going on, I will try to get my coffee to wake me up. So, but I'm just getting up from sleep. It's afternoon here. Hello, everyone. God bless you. Let's see what we can do with this foolishness this company idiot has brought up again. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So I am going to now leave the video to roll. Then we give it the rest of those parts, conclusive analysis. Now, let's play it. Pay very good attention. Jot down your own information. Those watching on YouTube, I know I can see your, um, I can see your comment on the screen, but I cannot see Facebook. Jot down your information. Those watching on YouTube, you can actually present it here. What you now understand while I am playing it because I am also jotting down so that I will not forget. That is the reason why I take it step one step at a time, but it prolongs the broadcast. But let's go there. Let's roll. Talk about Simon Epa, yeah. discuss Simon Epa. If you want. If they ask you a question about anybody, please discuss, but don't discuss. Your family. <laughs> Do not discuss our leader. Wow. If it is about Simon Ekpa, discuss me. Because there is nothing to discuss about, about me. So discuss about me, discuss about autopilot, discuss about all the people agitating, what, however, your opinion, discuss, discuss them, discuss me, discuss every activity of Simon Epa. Okay? Objectively. But, hmm. My own concern is do not discuss your family. Do not discuss our leader. Do not discuss the brothers. Do not discuss Canon Takano. Do not discuss Emmanuel Kano. Do not discuss the ones in Germany. Do not discuss any of these people on this law outing. It will backfire. It will backfire. Threat. And we don't want that. You have suffered enough. <laughs> Do not allow drowning people to drag you and bring your leg out. As you send this video to the wife of our leader, and as she watch this video, I want her to pay attention to today. Mm -hmm. She should pay attention to how I come down my voice. Threat. Threat. And speak to her. She should pay attention to the advice I have given. And the point 
I made, I made in these videos. This very important. Very important. The enemies are working very hard, tirelessly, to tear everything apart. She must not allow herself to be used by these enemies. Let this, this video, video penetrate, penetrate into you. Into you. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. The wife, wife of our leader. And may God, may God speak, speak, speak through, through me, me to you, to you. So, that so that they will, will not will succeed, not succeed in, using in using you. you for their own selfish, selfish. aggrandizement. Mm. But if it is about me, please speak. Speak your heart. If it is about me and not a pilot, please speak with everything you have. But, but do, do not, not speak, speak against, against your family. family. Don't, don't speak against, against your family. family. Don't, don't speak, speak against, against the brothers of Mazin and the Kano. Threats. Do not speak against them. Threats. We can speak against them if we want. Wow. I can speak against them if I want. Cover, covering the print. Do not speak against them. For whatever reason, the people are desperate to bring you to their radio show. For whatever reason, listening to this video, if you want, you can go if you, if want, you want, don't go. Don't go. As if past one, one year, he's in charge. It is not now, it is not now. that they see you worthy to be invited into their program. For the past one year, it is not now that they see you as a relevant person to be invited. Use your head, our wife, and may God be with you. You're welcome, dear friends. Our wife, when you you know this stupidity of the buffalo and the boy, you know, our leader, our supreme leader's wife, your wife. When you are your wife, your first lady, I'm off here. George Money. Um, um but I'm Heather, please uh, um come in. Let's, let's I start know you're upset. I have been boiling like a hot water on this stove. When I saw this clip, I think this morning when I was on my way coming back from work, I had saw a clip, a clip of it. I was like, What the hell is this? What the F is this compound fool trying to do? Uh, again, uh, how are you all, my uh, uh, brothers and sisters? God bless you all. Uh, that's the truth. <laughs> exactly. This idiot. He cannot rest. The wicked will never rest. Um, as he, judge money. I don't know the caption you gave this uh, broadcast. If you had consulted me before you started, if I knew you were going to do this, you know what I would have captioned it, or if I'm the one doing it, my oh. caption for this would have been the guilty is afraid. I think it's an appropriate name for this. The yes. guilty is afraid. Because an announcement was just made that our law law is coming.
to speak. She's coming to she's coming for an interview. She's coming to have a speak. Nobody even knows. I'm sure even the person that is going to interview her have no idea what she's going to say. I'm not even sure they've already prepared the question. Everything's going to be impromptu, organic. I saw that. I'm excited. I can't wait. But this guy got into panic mode. So what he's trying to do now is trying to control the narrative, trying to see what, how he can control or save his fucking ass. Excuse my language. Who is this idiot? Let's start from there. He's talking about he should not talk about who he should not talk about. Who told you what she's coming to talk about? <laughs> who told you? How do you know? If you're not guilty of things, how did you get to that conclusion or deduction? Now, let me tell you, I'm glad you played this now and I watched a clip of it. I want us, those who have not watched this or those who watch it to pay attention to what I'm going to say. Again, I'm invoking the act of body language that will give you up what is going on here all the time when he started talking about this thing whether he calls it an advice which i do not see as that i see it as a threat stupid threat that if this guy is in an uncivilized society somebody should hunt him down now and seal up his mouth with a hot iron and drag out his tongue from his throat Watch that area. Once he started speaking, he never looked up. Yes. You guys remember when I said something about body language, when you, you can distinguish when somebody's lying to you. He never looked up. He had his face down, articulating the lies as he was pushing them out, trying to use reverse psychology. He never looked to the camera. It was after immediately he finished, he thought he had finished vomiting the foolishness, he looked up. If anybody's doubting me, go back. And what I'm telling you guys, you can find this, is a kind of study. It's a school of thought. It's on internet. It's called non-verbal communication. That way I can find it. Our eyes speak volume. Our eyes. Our faces our hands you saw him he was literally looking like somebody that was tied up he wasn't moving he was not yeah. animated why because when you see when you're talking to somebody and they fold their hands or they bring themselves to this post was a posture he had they're protecting themselves that's what that language is telling you there is something that protecting it is called guarding themselves. When you're telling the truth, the truth flows. Where you have nothing to hide, it flows. That's why you say the person is unguarded. And that is when sometimes you can feel, you can pick up truth from somebody who is trying to lie. When they're unguarded, that is, they are not consciously trying to hide something from you. Everything about this idiot body language, he's trying to guard himself, he's trying to protect it, whatever information he has. But the argument is that does he even know whether this woman has it? Now, what is this happening to me and very annoying to me is this who is Simon to come in to say he's a why did he even make this broadcast? Who is he? Who is it? I mean, this guy continues to assert himself like he's something or somebody. Is he trying to say now that he has more sense? He's more intelligent. He's more articulate. He knows more. He knows better than her. He's trying to advise her. Somebody that is academically more educated than you. Somebody who can dissect English language and understand the true meaning of what she's saying or about to say. Exactly. Somebody who can articulate information at that form into her ID level of consciousness even in her subconsciousness, she will articulate them, see them, weigh them, 
before she brings them up. I have watched that woman's interview one or two times. She's not loose with language. When you watch that woman, you will know that she's careful. She weighs her op op opinions. You are the one that come in to advise her who to invoke, who not to invoke. <laughs> By the way, what is your interest? Or what will be your interest if she invokes Kano Takano? <laughs> I know you said the families of Mars, but I know the main person you don't want her to talk about is Kano Takano. He goes back to the last thing we just said, follow the information. There is something about Kano Takano. There's a connection between you know the, with the, when i made that argument last time i said there might be i'm suspecting there might be a connection a correlation um a con you know a, a connection i was speculating that time i don't know whether it was on your platform or it can but i was i made this speculation but with this thing this idiot has done i can tell you there's a direct relationship between what kanonta has tried to push out and what Simon Ekpa has tried to push out, there has to be a connection because if not, let me ask Ekperima. You want to tell me that you are a member of Mazin and the Kano's family now? Is that what you're trying to tell me? So you want to tell me you know this family more than this woman? <laughs> that what you're to tell me? So you don't advise her whether to talk about them or not. Whether she's coming mm. to see that or not, I don't know. It's irrelevant. It's immaterial. Because even if she wants to talk about them, she has every right. But I know, knowing her, I don't even think she will go there because that would be debasing for her. I don't think that's why she's coming. That's my own opinion. I don't think so. No, listen. I want to listen to that woman. That's the last thing. Even you, she has no interest in you. She's not going to talk about you, even though she may know a whole lot about you. I want you to go and get a little cup, a cup of a kai kai and drink. Calm down. She's not going to talk about you. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Because, because she's too mature to talk about. You are irrelevant. Because if you for this interview, the whole world will be glued to. And all she's going to talk is about Ekberima in Finland. <laughs> the compound food. She, I mean, she yeah. cannot bring herself to that level of degradation. So go and get your little wine or whatever you drink. Take it, calm down. Nobody's coming after you yet. But what is it, your interest with Kano Takano? What is your interest even if she wants to come and spill the beans about the family? And what is these beans about the family that you know, that you think you have made yourself or making yourself an advocate to protect this feeling of the beans to come out? Oh, wait a minute. Now you are concerned that she's coming to a platform for whatever, whether it's an interview or just coming to say, hello, my people, thank you for your support, all your support for my husband, or blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what she's coming to say. But knowing that woman, <laughs> where you're going is not even where her mind is. So, hey, wake up. Your, you know, I want to spoil, give you a spoiler a lot. She's not going there. But let's assume, when Bridget invited her, deceived her, lied to her, to come to a platform you guys organized, you spearheaded it, they called prayer uh, uh, breakfast for Marzi. And you guys deceived her just to drag her into a mess, to make her look stupid, to make her look foolish, to make people think that she's part of the, all this nonsense. You, Kamunta, Madam Nene, sorry, Nene Anya, all of you have been cooking plus Nelly. You, brought, you guys brought her to a platform where they claimed with that Michael Jackson's pastor. You people, they said they were having a breakfast, but they kept to crown your stupid ass that you're the next in line. That Mazi, the prayer point from that stupid Michael Jackson prophet, I have never seen after that issue. I, I believe he has gone into the oblivion. That you are now the Joshua of Biafra movement. Simon Ekpa. I never heard you objected for that nonsense Bridget tried to pull on that woman. That first one. I never heard you made a comment before or after. You knew about it. You cherished it. You enjoyed every moment of it because you wanted to wrap her in your foolishness. You wanted to put her hand, put her name inside her name, 
In your stupidity, you and Bridget. That's one of the things I have against Bridget Okaf. She's very manipulative, chameleon to the core. When she cooked up this madness, you were about it because you were the real main reason they held that deception in the name of prayer breakfast. To bring you there, they say they have ordained you. They are giving you the mantle. You didn't think that it was wrong to bring her on any platform. You didn't care for her enough to say, no, we don't want to drag you in our mess, as you call it a mess now. Now, all of a sudden, because you think the, the odds are working against you or may work against you. Oh, excuse me, you just woke up from your slumber. Now you're going to begin to preach to her. That's the level of insult. That's what making me mad. Who are you to advise her? You are not even qualified to be a cook for her. You're not qualified to be a maid for her. Who the hell do you think you are? Empty brain trying to advise a rich brain. Can anybody think about that? Trying to carry a garbage to put into a clean place. Your brain is a garbage brain. We're talking about a woman who sanitize, organize, high IQ. Who are you to advise her? That's my anger. You couldn't advise your wife not to leave you. You couldn't. You couldn't advise your wife not to tell people what happened in your home. Because people know your story and your wife. How you use her to do papers and all that bullshit. How she left you because of how you were calling her derogatory names and other things. You couldn't advise her to shut her fucking mouth when she left you. You couldn't. You didn't have the ability. You didn't have the capability to control your own foolishness. Your own madness. But you think you can open your crazy, idiotic brain and ooze out some garbage that is thinking all over the place. Who are you? Enough of this madness. You love her so much. You care. When was her last birthday, Simon Ekpa? Ekpa Rima. When was the last birthday of this woman? I never saw you do anything. I never saw you reacted. I never saw you extended a hand of friendship to her. I never even saw you posted anything about her to say happy birthday. Your leader? Your leader's wife? What do you mean by that? I can guarantee you all, if this announcement, oh, I know bear friends are smart. The real core bear friends are intelligent and they're making good use of their brain. Especially mm -hmm. those on the hierarchy level. Why am I making this statement now? I can guarantee you, if Mazi Jonathan had made that announcement before the birthday of our queen, Ekwerima would have extended a, a, a happy birthday to her just to try to lobby her. Cheap lobbyist. That this guy is a cheap lobbyist. But they kept it under control. After the, her birthday, they release it. Now, yes. there's nothing he can do. He's panicking. He would even have bought a gift for her because everything about Ekwerima is bribery and corruption. Ekwerima and, and that's, why, that's and part of the him. reason why the Finnish woman left him. Exactly. You know, bribery and corruption, manipulation, deception. He never believed in doing things right. He never believed in being straight. Your wife is a lawyer. You claim to be a lawyer because you're attached to her. Yes. You never attended exactly. any law school. You're not even a, pre a pre legal practitioner. You find your way, copied all her documents, stole them. Made yourself a lawyer. You transition from there, make find yourself into IPOB, not even legally, not even legitimately, you're not a member. Somehow they allow you to pee into the room. You became disciple. You begin to copy everything, copyright, copy, copy. Your next name should be copycat. Your next name should be Xerox. You begin to Xerox everything, make them your own. From there now, you are the leader. Leader of who? You are asking her not to go to University of Radio Biafra. Those people. This is the project of her husband. This is a platform where her husband is the, oh, literally the owner. He created it. That's how dumb you are. He is the owner of that 
program, the platform. And you're telling her she should be careful. What are you scared of, little man? Because you look so small. Look at him. Even with the still picture you have of him, look at him so small. He looks so small like a child that, that has knew that he has done something wrong and the father is about to come home. And the mother has told mm. him, wait until your father comes home, you're going to receive some beating. That's how this coward looks like. Look at, take a look at that picture. That's what he looks like. What I'm looking on the screen now. He looks so small. And that's the person that is, you know, this social media and this thing we are in has made everybody to come out and open their mouth and say whatever they want. That's the power of social media. Exactly. In real life, in normal time, can this idiot even be in the same space with where this woman is? No, in real world, he cannot. But now he's coming on social media to talk nonsense. If you like take sleeping pill tomorrow on, on, on the on the third, she's coming. You know, this is almost the same thing he did when he thought Marzi was going to be released. It's almost the same thing. Yes. He made an announcement. I'll be speaking from inside. Now, you guys may not be seeing me. Look at how little people who are following this man. Look at how scared when he is, he can be when reality begins to, you know, face him. This is somebody you people are following. That a woman is coming on a program. Simon is shitting all over on himself. I have a smaller alert for you, my uh, experiment. Your shit is about to hit the ceiling fan. Wait for it. Your bullshit it's inevitable. is about to hit the ceiling fan. It's not this woman. It gives you another insight in the mind of these idiots. All of them. Because I've been asking the question, why are they doing this thing with impunity? These guys in their crazy cocoon mind and cocoon land where they are, you know, they truly don't believe that Mazi will come out. Mm. I'm telling you. They never believed it. They never believed that Mazi will come out. Even as we speak. That's why they're doing everything and anything they can to destroy the OS. Because once you destroy DOS, the coming of Mazi is going to be harder. Because mm. if they believe Mazi will come out, they will not be doing what they know is wrong. Why am I saying That's it? Right. It's not even Mazi is coming out. Mazi's wife is coming. Mazi's wife has not been actively involved in everything we are doing since Mazi has been extraordinary rendition. In the media. She has not in the media been actively, you know, whatever we are doing, whatever. You, you call it bullshit, you call it whatever. She's not been involved in all this whatever uh, social media uh, issue. So your question becomes, what is Ekberima afraid of? What are those things? The guilty is always afraid. Even when you don't know what they have done. Just because they know what Let's they have done. Let's make you more, more afraid. Let's bring more, more audience to this program. Please do. Let's bring more audience to this program very important you know this, so, this is crazy he's saying the wife of our leader the leader of who autopilot leader or ipob under the leadership of mazi edozian right now as designated person to continue to pilot this struggle mazi has never did not create any autopilot <laughs> so, what is this does Mazi does know what is autopilot exactly who is this person what is he talking about this guy needs to be taken for psychiatric evaluation he's losing it he has lost it I mean one thing is to tell a lie another thing is to tell a blunted lie come on yeah. now oh you were not concerned with all these things Wendy was cursing her out on your platform your attention was called when was Sophia or whatever, this is the first time I'm calling her crazy name, invoked her, calling her a prostitute and all of that. You were not concerned. Even people called your attention. You were not concerned. You did not ask them to stop. Your argument was that you cannot control what people do or say. But now you think you can come and control what she does or says? When you were taught to caution Nelly, crazy Nelly, 
You said, I cannot control what Nelly does. Mm. But now you want to control what our queen does or what she's coming to say. Oh. This is the oh, derogatory really message that are hurting me. I'm telling you that this guy has a lot of skeleton in his cupboard. Too much. You are the one that said you do not have time. You don't watch uh, the crazy so-called broadcast. You don't watch uh, IPOB platforms. You don't watch any University of uh, Radio Biafra. So how did you know this interview was coming to take place? You see how you, dis you know, expose your ass? <laughs> How did you know? How did you see the announcement? I wonder. Because it was announced on Radio Biafra platform. And yet you don't watch it. This is absurd. This is crazy. I mean, I've seen everything he has done. This is one of the ones that are really making me really angry. You Uche no is not idea. listening to you. She's above you. You don't have the goals. You don't have the balls. You don't have the acumen. You don't have anything to advise anybody. You need to advise yourself for before you begin to advise. Her. Go and get your wife. Where is your son? You used to parade him everywhere. Where is he? What happened to him? You are not able to keep your house in order. You want to keep somebody else in order. Misplay priorities because you're scared. You people are lucky that um, uh, our queen is not somebody like me. I'm telling you, you all are lucky. From a uh, canon tower to all of you, you are lucky. She's not my type. I would have messed all of you up. But that's she's not the type. And it's not even the time. This is not the right time for her to come and say it. Even if she has, uh, you know, whatever she knows, this is not the right time. She's not stupid. She's not dumb. There is time for everything. She's coming to say hello to us. So go and get your kai kai. Chill out. Wait your day of reckoning is coming. It is not on the third. Let that I can give you that expo. Let me give you that one because she's not as dumb as you are. As it, um, judgment. If you have any question, you can ask me, please. I can hear you. I think you're muted. Unmute yourself. Um, okay. okay, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, that's why I always like to do this with you. Um, but we have a, somebody who called. That person is boiling hot. Let's see what is making him his blood boil so much. Bring the person you in. Know, let me bring him in because he can't wait. He actually begged me that he want to talk. Let's see which angle he's coming from. The caller on the line, your name and where you are calling from, please. Yeah, Mazi, um, George Money. Good evening from here. Good evening. Yeah, my brother, I'm um, watching the program. Please use two minutes, use uh, two minutes to uh, finalize. Try to, quickly, you yeah? know, educate beer fans this evening um, concerning um, this uh, little boy in Finland. And uh, I want to use this opportunity also to say a very big thank you for being there to educate these morons, those of them that cannot use your brain. Before I continue to make a little bit um, comment in what you have said this evening, I was watching it. I cannot be able to hold myself any longer. This is reason why I I really want to speak to Bia France. Though so before I say anything, fellow Bia France, my name is Mazi Akas. I'm calling here from Austria and by the special grace of Jukot Babiama. I am the IPOB Austria National IPR and I want to shout a hello to our wonderful sister, uh, Sister Miriam Haida. You are Thank you, my brother. There. Thank you. It's so always good to hear your voice. You're one of the strongest that that I said criminals are place. trying to hide. Thank you. My brother, um, George Money, um, there is a word that said, uh, Give the conscience fears no accusation. And uh, my problem about this little guy that hiding himself in one room somewhere in Finland, trying to make himself relevant, which the Air France know that he's one of the most idiotic person I have ever seen in my life. The truth about this guy is that if he don't have any cockroach in his cupboard 
who is this mad guy to advise a well-learned woman, a well-polished woman, a woman that we hold in high esteem, a woman Biafran respects so much that even the legs she walks on the ground, we respect that because her husband has shown a, a good example, have taught us what we know today. And this idiot said he's piloting autopilot, coming to advise Biafrans, coming to advise IPOB, or coming even to advise a leader, a, 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 a wife of a leader of IPOB, what she's going to tell us? Who is this idiot? <laughs> I, I know the, the, the truth about it is that those that I, 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 I wrote something and I said, those that are still listening to this epidemic in Finland, they can never get sense in till eternity. I was the one that named this guy Eperima in 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 uh, in our sister's platform um um Biafra. When the heat was going on, people never believed that this girl was at the right path trying to expose this idiot. We we fought together. We stand on this gate fighting from from that beginning. Till the people later understood that this guy never come for real. He came for destruction. Those that those that uh, um, employed him through Dave Omahi and the so-called politi politicians that you know employed him to infiltrate IPOB to cause you know trying to create a parallel. But today, those of us that really fought this guy from the beginning when he's trying to come to play and and, and, and jesus when he has leprosy in his hand we, we we identify him from that beginning and we say this guy is not real and today true dear friends true hard cause those that really listen to our leader martin nandekana the true followers of our leader martin nandekana have knew that this, this guy is 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 a devil internet my problem this evening is that who sent this guy? Who made him to come to advise a woman that she is not even up to clean the shoe that this woman is putting on, on her feet? Uh, my brother, round up, round up. Uh, your two minutes is um, uh, uh, is finished, and uh, round up, round up. And we're having more calls, which we're not supposed to have a lot of calls. Please round up, okay? Hello? The caller, are you there? This guy go back to Nelly or Fable to go and advise them, advise the idiot that when they were calling this woman names, she ha he has to go back to advise those people, not our leader, his wife. Thank you, Marzi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. There is something he said I love so much. He said that he came to play Jesus while he has is it leprosy in his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, another thing that well, Mazika Akazi, you know, my regards to him, I always hear his thunderous voice left and right. This is one of the gate, real gatekeepers fighting in the trenches. My, my cap, I doff it for him. I've not seen him, but I know uh, any day I have opportunity to see him, I must definitely give him a good hug. Thank you, Mazi. But you know, one okay. of the things that he rattled my brain or he provoked my mind is, Go you know, to tell you the degree of insult of what this guy has tried to try to perpetuate or try to put up. So he's trying to tell us now that even when Mazi comes out, he's going to advise Mazi on what to say. Is that what he's going to I mean, that's the level of madness. Exactly. Exactly. Is that what he's trying to say? Now he's going to tell mm. Mazi, don't go and talk. Oh, well, you better be careful what you say. Oh. That's what, it, because for you to begin to advise a woman whose husband is still alive, try to come into the family together, even Canon Takano, men cannot do this thing on their own, whether they're the one that sent him or not. I'm not accusing them, but I am telling you, we all know our. Family. I thought as much. I thought as much. Yes. Even as brothers of Mazi, the Mephad Mazi is still alive and well. 
cannot control this one or tell this woman what to do or say because if they do that as an insult to man they what are trying to tell our hamadike that he's not capable of controlling his wife he did not marry a good wife he made a horrible choice the woman he brought into the family is not articulate the woman cannot be trusted the woman is a disgrace the woman cannot be allowed to listen to the deep things of the family because she can go out there and stupidly expose them that's the in depth of this madness exactly they can't even do that it's an insult it's an insubordination in the highest order you're trying to tell us that man he made the wrong choice that he married a woman incapable that's what he's trying so that's why he's stepping in to come and advise her and when his own wife he couldn't minister to her to stay with his fucking ass that's how useless this thing is he, he fix he fixes family of people but he cannot fix his no own. he cannot fix this he can't even fix he's himself play, playing at, jesus with the he can't even behind. fix himself look at how he's looking like a vulture beaten by rain so small i've never seen him this small that will tell you all oh, watch his face like i said take a look he couldn't raise his eyelids because he knew he was lying to the core he couldn't face the camera that's what when you say here in america they say come and face the camera what they're trying to tell you is if you know you're telling the truth look straight into that camera and speak to your people he couldn't do exactly. it because he knew he was that's lying. The way it is. Mm. Well, i think somebody else is trying to come in we have a caller on the line the caller on the line your name and where you're calling from please two minutes i'll help you but well, I'm Biafra, we held you. so um i just want to say a big thank you to our sister maria Helda because i know that whenever she's on the program somebody is gonna receive his or her evening pills Definitely. so i think uh, she has administered the pills very very well today and I'm so happy. I just wanted to ask you, this boy does not have respect for women. At all. Had it been he had a little respect, he wouldn't have been doing all this shit that he should do all these months with women. Just watch his program. He's always floating. He manipulates them and then he disgraces them. And he gangs up with another group of women, he manipulates them, and then he he rubbish them in front of everyone. And that is a, a typical behavior of somebody who has no principles, no values in life. He has nothing. All he has is his selfish uh, interest and the, the, the greediness, the greediness to be, to acquire be known to be famous and that is killing him day after day exactly it's killing him day after day had it been he respects women yes. he wouldn't have even come out to think of advising such a woman because that woman is a pride of Biafra. exactly she is a symbol of our freedom so he should not have considered himself on any way capable of telling her or advising her on what to do. That woman has been through a lot, a lot, a lot. The husband has been taken for months and she was, she's been playing the role of father and mother to the kids. And at the same time, standing up tall for what his husband believes in. So it's so, so unfortunate that we are dealing with a, a person that has no values and principles in life. And just as we've been telling him for months to mind his business, to change from his evil ways, we'll be sitting on our chairs comfortable and we'll watch him destroy himself by himself. Mm -hmm. All we need is to open our eyes under the sun and ask you to be able to do the rest. He is evil. But I'm so, so happy that the day of reckoning is coming. And we all will watch it. I just want to see his face when he will hear that Ohamadike one of the Afra is out. That will be the first thing. Hmm? Finland people should prepare the, the, 
the what they call it the ambulance for him all of <laughs> for you take attack. all help Biafra. thank you so much Biafra we held it thank you very much <laughs> she said that you finland people that are watching prepare you know i see you prepare i see you because maybe somebody will have a heart attack if they are worried that our Hamadike wife is coming to Radio Biafra. That's only. what I said. Imagine if Hamadike himself is out. This guy, you know, my sister that called, thank you, God bless you. But I, let me give you a spoiler alert. You will not see his face. If you are waiting to see his face when Hamadike okay. comes out, so, spoiler alert for you, you will not see his face. He already giving you a clue how he plans to handle the issue. When he thought Hamadike was going to come out, he said, I'm going to pull back now and walk from behind the sand. So my sister, I'm sorry to disappoint us. We may not be able to say that because that would have been the most joyous day for me. I would like, I will go buy me a good bottle of dry champagne, cross my leg and watch as he's going to, we can't see his face. He doesn't have the balls. He can't do it. Uh, definitely. We have another caller on the line. Uh, please, the caller on the line utilize two minutes. Please, your name and where you calling from, please. Good evening, dear friends. This is uh, Wogo, Wogo Yibobo, IPOD backboard. Uh, I greet each and every one of you. Uh, I'm here, I greet you. I appreciate uh, your work. And uh, I am telling you now to keep it up. I'm pleased, I'm pleased. Don't join. All those who are that are in America. <laughs> My brother, I, I, let me yeah. say, I assure you, no, it will never happen. Even if um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it will never happen. I came into this fight. I was not invited by anybody. I did not join because of emotion. I came with my head. I came with my heart. I came with my soul. That's a promise I will give you to anybody thinking that I am not fake. I am genuine. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, so what I want to contribute is that, uh, George Money, yeah. I am telling you this authority. Yeah? It's yeah. he, Kanon Takano, mm. and uh, his brother. Mm. I am very, very sure that they are still working with this criminal in Finland. No, they are. I am telling you, on good authority. They are. They are working with him. And why did they why did they come the, the blood brokers are that criminal that idiot talker and academic he actually tried to vindicate to, to exonerate the criminal in finland claiming that we are not we are the people that are gossip why um eberima is a good guy mm. so that eberima will now in return start defending them and yes. that is what is happening now mm. it's true you can see that uh, by now defending them because the amount of who is uh, um, master profit has been changed by Kenya. So they need another platform where their voice will be coming out. And that is why they went back to. You are right. They have Kenya. no choice. You see? So whatever Berema uh, says, just see it as canon as speaking. And we will be dealing with him and be dealing with canon because. Is the one that is sending everyone. Yes. Uh, so he has no right. He has no. He just. He's a, he's a low life. He has no no right to say anything at all concerning our first lady. Whatever our first lady comes to say, is none of his business. Whether the first lady call, will come and tell and and speak about the evil nature of Canon Takano. We don't, it is none of their business. Whether she's coming to say hello to, to Piafra, it's none of, our, of their business. We love her and we cherish her and we will keep standing by her and we will continue this struggle until Piafra is restored. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Anna, you. Thank you very much. You know, so just like this, our people. brother said, when you're a low life, you think that you're, low, you're a low life and you act like a low life. When you, mm. because that is why our people have this adage, 
the way yes, you man. see somebody do things is the way they process life because you're seeing life from your own perspective so you think everybody is like that yeah. he just gave him you know he just something upright he's a low life because what is happening you know most likely smells like you know what is the heat that is on canon takano right now there's a heat mm. on him we coming out and debunking all his lies, exposing all the nonsense he's been doing, how he knew about um, uh, uh, Ahmadike's capture and kept quiet, and all the rest of shenanigans he's been doing through Master Prophet and all that, and through him, Ekperima, unraveling the, 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 their, their bundle. So he thinks that that's the timing. He's looking at timing, that our queen is coming at this time to add more salt to this story. But that's because it's a low life. It is. Whether Kano Takano is a cousin, whether Kano Takano is a brother, whether Kano Takano is a distance relative. Like I said, it's immaterial. His behavior has not showcased him to be a true brother. A brother is not somebody that is biologically connected to you. They themselves, because I'm seeing some crazy candle he has there and some crosses. So let me take him to church. Even though he doubles into church, he comes out and says that it's automobile. Because of this white candle, now let me take him, give him a little bit of scripture. When Yeshua was ministering, some people came to him and said, your brothers and sisters are here. The Bible said that he looked at them and said, who are my brothers and sisters? Apparently, his siblings were there. Biological siblings were there. He looked at the crowd, looked at his siblings and said, no, these people might, I'm paraphrasing, these people might be my biological siblings, but those who listen and obey my word are my true brothers. Yeah, I exactly. didn't write the Bible. So, Kano Takano might be biological to Mazi or Hamadike. It does not matter. What matters is to Mazi and she matters to Mazi, and I believe that matters to Mazi. Those who are obeying his instruction, guarding that which is precious to him, or those things that are precious to him, which one of them yes. is immediate family, his wife and his children. This yes. experiment, since Mars, he's trying to tell us, or he's asking a question, for the past one year, our Mars has been in the hands of his enemies. Oh, it is now. that you know That's why I'm telling you guys, the idiot is walking looking at timing but he got it wrong okay he's looking at season but he got it wrong so it is now that he's they're inviting her to radio biafra listen to that statement you ask yourself what is happening now that is why i invoked that state the previous statement that it is because of the heat on kano takano and kano's family that he's thinking that that is why this woman is coming but he's wrong because he has a little mind. He thinks everybody have little mind like because him. that's why I say that the proactiveness of a criminal create a prima facie. Exactly. So that's the way he's processing life, but that's not true. That's not what is happening. He has no idea when they started working to bring this woman to this platform. This is a woman that is busy. This is a woman that is very private. This is a woman that don't want to be. She's not a social media. Uh, junkie so i can guarantee you i don't know but i can guarantee you the little psychology i've put on this woman this conversation must have been going on for months even for her to look at her schedule make it available for her to agree i will come but because this idiot thinks on a whim and thinks everybody thinks like that he must have thought that a uh, joker has said, hey can you come on the bridge you say yeah i'm coming because she has nothing to do she's not busy like you who claim to be whatever but every day you're on the platform morning afternoon evening which i have asked when do you even have time to go and educate <laughs> adjudicate your box when do you have time to go and walk everybody's not like you everybody's not like you so Kanunta, whether he is a blood brother or he's a biological or whatever you call it distant whatever 27 people plus a cousin making it 28 people died on the day they came to kill our Hadike. They were not his direct siblings, but they paid the ultimate price. 
Yes. And Kamal Kakama proudly say he was the one videoing. Okay. He only goes to where That's he why. That's why he has the right to... Yeah, we should to, congratulate him because he was hiding inside a box and was videoing. <laughs> Or uh, probably in a in a in, in a security room where the, the police did not go, the army did not go, and from the window mm -hmm. he was able to safely video. We should congratulate him and not congratulate those who pay the ultimate price trying to protect our mass. Eh? It's just mm -hmm. like the same, you know, what he's trying to tell us to do is you know, when you see people post all these uh, cam uh videos of unknown gunmen, so we should be congratulating the people who were videoing in the, from the safe, the comfort of their yeah. home. We should thank them. And the people who are out there walking, we should not thank them because the cameraman now is more important. You see how they think? Yeah. That is why he thinks he can stay in the comfort of his house and be dishing out instructions that he can never carry out. <laughs> He's concerned about this woman coming, our our queen coming to the program. Ekperima, you were supposed to be in Nigeria by now. The 15th of August have come and gone. You said you'll be dishing up, you know, you will come in with blazing fire. Any Nigerian <laughs> uh, military or personnel you see in Biafra Life will be dealt with, gone down. But you're still in Finland. Your gullible fellow, is, your puppies are not asking There you is questions. somebody who said that, <laughs> that the Mugu Kotoogwa, <laughs> there is a program he did where somebody said Mugu, Mugu Aputa Kogwa, so he came to. To give testimony of his mugus. Exactly. <laughs> you have been dishing out instructions. You have studied a, a, a government in exile. You have elected your ministries, your ministers, everything. You are not dealing with it. What is concerning you is just a woman is coming to a program. Is consuming you. Look at how little you look. She's not coming for you. She doesn't think about you. She doesn't even know you exist. You are asking why is it now that she's coming to a program? Ekperima, you want to say that you care, you love her, we love you. Who are the we? For the past one year, this woman, our queen and her children have been going through hell on earth. When was the last time or the first time you picked the phone and tried to find out how they're doing? You love her. What is love? Easy to say. Have you wondered how she's been taking care of us, her wife and the children? Hey, Perima, nobody's looking for you in Nigeria. Why have you not flown down in Nigeria to go and show our man this solidarity, solidarity that you care? Why? Nobody's looking for you. But what you're busy doing and recreating, recreating everything her husband has worked so hard and suffered. This is their project. Biafra is their project. And you care. And people are listening to you. Look at how small you have made yourself. You look like a wimp that you are. In fact, he looks like a child that is has done something and is being confronted by his parents and he wants to, he's peeing right there on the spot. That's how this idiot looks like. Let it be the first and last time you'll ever invoke your, her name on your mouth. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. Oh. And cannot, I cannot, if you're the one that set up this one, you have messed yourself up again. Your day of reckoning is coming. This Definitely. is your brother's wife. I never had you, cannot, I cannot, or any member of your family come out at least to give us an update how your brother's children are doing. If you guys have, are genuine, that's have you you won won that. telling us giving us updates how your brother's children, your court, your niece, nephews, nephews are doing. Exactly. Care about have her. you wondered, Marian Heather? I have the wondered. That's why, why I'm saying all this. I've wondered. They don't care. We have. <laughs> People must ask these questions. No, you have wondered. You have wondered, my sister. Um, we have a caller here. But there is something I want to ask you now. Have you asked yourself, I know you have wondered, the reason why our first lady went to United Nations and this thing came out April, this United Nations of a thing we are talking about all this while, it was our first lady and they concealed it. The thing that the vanguard did, they surfaced the one of Kanon Takam. Yes. It was when I dug deep 
I found out the one. And when I made some findings, I was told that this was done in April, only came out in, was it in August or end of July? Yes. That was when it was it surfaced because of that one Vanguard showed of Canon Takam. Yes. Because what Vanguard did, what they did in October 2021, they you know they optimized the search engine, they, they, what do you, and they, they, they now increase the SUO, which is search engine optimization, so that it will be on top of Google, on top of every search engine. Yeah. So that it will be the first you will find. Yes. So that's what they did. Now, the one of our leader's wife, which was the latest one that gave the reaction to Nigeria, they did not bring it out. Because, because you know, they are trying, even when you speak, if you, are, if you have an opportunity to speak to a member of this family, whether it's extended or direct, and they open their mouth about this woman, they hate her. The argument becomes, why? And that tells you a, a lot of things, somebody like me. They cannot give you a tangible reason or any reason at all why they hate her. When you ask her, what is it that is wrong about her? They start running around like chicken with their head. They cannot tell you anything. So it tells me it's just because they don't find her easy to manipulate so that they can mm. manipulate our Hamadike because they know our Hamadike is somebody that has a lot of empathy for his fellow human being. That's the only guilt mm. of this woman. That's the mm. only guilt. And mm. let me tell you about Western world. Let me tell you one of the things, even in their court proceedings, you will see what I'm about to say. They have a lot of empathy for women because they truly yeah. believe that women should be protected. Mm. That true. is why when you want to, somebody that will give a good advocacy for you, the best person to call are your parents, your parents, especially your mother or your mm. female siblings. And another thing they do, when you see them on the stand, then they begin to talk with pure emotions, crying, it melts the heart of the Westerners. So the main fact that this woman went to UN, and they know that this is the wife, and they know, they are aware the injustice that have been meted to her husband. And you have women there too. They will ask themselves the question how this woman has been carrying on, which I tried to bring out on her birthday. None of us can explain how many pillows she has soiled with her tears. These are facts. I don't know how, but I can tell you. Because she has to do everything now. Make sure these children are sane. Make sure they're okay, emotionally and otherwise. The whole weight is on her. And she's coming from a family where her Husband relatives literally abandoned her. They don't give a hoot about her. It's a whole lot. And you have not done anything wrong to them just because you are being genuine and real. So it carries a lot of weight what this woman is going through. And I'm sure I was not at the proceedings, but at that time she went to the UN, they must have seen through her emotions. They must have seen through her heart what she's going through. It will carry more weight than when a man goes in there. It is called testosterone effect. When men see their fellow man, they are ready to fight. Genuine yeah. men. But when they it see a woman, that is why a woman sometimes in the Bible is what you call the Lila effect. But it's called testosterone effect. Testosterone effect. Mm. It doesn't matter how strong a man is. It doesn't matter how in the position the man is. A woman can always manipulate him because for every man, there's a particular woman or women you have a soft spot for, and that will become the demise of that man. That is why I'm going to advise every man, when you see women, including myself, guard your hearts. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. We have, we have a caller. Let's, um, let's uh, that one, let's use it as if you bunu chai. The caller on the line, your name and where you're calling from, please. Ah, good evening, my brother. Mazi, George Money. Good evening. Yeah, my, my name is uh, Wanda Obi. I'm calling from the Netherlands. Good evening, our sister. My Hilda. It's always good to hear your voice. They won't watch in a Dutch name. Adamazi, on here, why you need a Wadamazi, Adamazi, they won't name. 
<laughs> My brother, I, I, I have been listening even today when I saw the preamble of, of this broadcast, uh, and you you were not very sure of what time you are coming online. So let her. What I say, I bet uh, Mazi Judgment is saying he was coming online because I know that this program is going to be very, very, very interesting. You know, just like everybody is going. When I saw, I didn't even know he made a broadcast. It was you know, because I, I can't stand the face of that idiot. <laughs> like. Like you know, if you if you if you ask me to kill him today, I, I would have killed him hundred years ago. You understand? I can't stand the face of that buffoon. I can't stand his face. So it's only through your program that I, maybe when you're analyzing it, I want to see. You understand? So when I saw it, I was like, so this guy has the audacity. He does. The audacity. I even I even shared it on my platform, and people are having, people are reacting. People are reacting very angrily. So this guy has the audacity to say this. What, 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 what is he hiding? What is he afraid of? What, what is it that he's afraid of? You are, you are giving a woman, a woman by profession, a lawyer, you are giving a, a lawyer, a lawyer, an advice of what to come and say in public.
So they shouldn't bring that emotional uh, this thing to us, uh, uh, family or not. The family of Mazin and the Kano that we know right now is the wife and the kids. That's the family of Mazin and the Kano. And anyone that respects themselves. Because you don't tell me that tomorrow Mazin will come up and support Kano Takano in what he's doing. Mazin will never take that nonsense. And I have it on a good record. The information available to me. Mazin and the Kano have told him several times to stay away from Mazin. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Send a message to him to stay away from my POP. Mm. Stay away from my POP. He, he will not hear. I don't want to take much of your time. I just say I should contribute this later so that other people can call. Thank you very much. And then you you said it the way it is. Uh, of course, Mazen Namzekan told him to stay clear from the activities. You know, he should not interfere but uh, because he believes he can. And then what I am thinking in this regard, I think Ojuzo Kalu is using um, Ojuzo Kalu is using Kanon Takan. But there is something our sister said here that I want to um, touch on it more. This is the reason why, the actual reason why they now spiritualize everything written in the Bible. This is the reason why they spiritualize everything about Yehoshua. This is the reason. Without, they tell you he was born of Holy Spirit so that when you see your Savior, you will not recognize him. You are waiting for Holy Spirit to, to give birth to that person before you will know that this person is your Savior. When you see your, your boogeyman, you start celebrating them. Because that has been a problem of our people spirituality and religiosity it's been our problem until we are able to see the analogy between those two you will not decode your problem and what europeans do to africa you will find it that if you are able to you know be able to understand the analogy you will understand that it was what transpired during esau and jacob you know metaphor in the bible uh, maren heather please um, there is something uh -huh. before you, you come in in this program. Remember, there is a place that he said that they are having a phone call, but you don't want people to call him and ask him about this um, issue of him talking about our leader's wife. What do you think about it? Because I know I don't have time going back to it, unless if you want us to do so. I mean, if he says something like that, it's obvious because, you know, he knows what, like I said, he's conscious of most of these things, if not all the things he's doing, even though he's doing them out of one ignorance, out of wickedness, out of stupidity, out of because he's been, you know, he has taken some money, he was sent on an errand, he must accomplish it, okay? So that's, these are the things playing. He's conscious of what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing is bad, okay? So that's why he doesn't want to have any phone call because he wasn't sure what they were going to ask him because time and time people have he has tried to uh, allow people to call into his program and when they called in the questions that were brought to him were too hard for him to answer because they were going to implicate him and when he didn't answer or he called the person off he became a boomerang people used it against him so he's trying to walk that fine line somehow make this state stupid crazy presentation that's what i call it and then let it go out there without being checkmated. That's what he was trying to do there. And people must understand this. Nothing more, nothing less. Because this guy doing an in-depth analysis or serious analysis on him is worthless because he's so shallow. So you're going to just take him on the shallow level where he belongs. When you start to go deeper into him, you give him a lot of credence he doesn't deserve. He doesn't even have how much more deserving it. He's an idiot. Simple and short. A compound one. Compound one, yes. <laughs> because a compound idiot is somebody who doesn't know that he's an idiot. Somebody is an exactly. idiot, and he or she does not know he's an idiot. He continues to wallow in his foolishness, in his stupidity. That is the worst. The person is in, in a deep, dark hole. We are so, not even illuminate. Because once exactly. you realize you're stupid, once you realize you're an idiot, now you begin to dig yourself out of the idiocy. He's not there. That's why it's compound. There's a lot of layers to be peeled off. 
for him to begin to understand how stupid he is. That's why I call him a compound idiot. The request, the request with his activities. And um, please, there is something else I want you to I want to bring in before um, we we see if those we're calling will come back. I'm discussing. He is begging the first lady. Please discuss Simon, eh, but don't discuss Canon Takan. And then he also said, um, I am coming down because now when I told people that he was threatening the first lady, he said that I want you to look for two things or three things in this my program that I am coming down. I am calm telling you these things. And now for him to say he is coming down, telling him these things, and for him to say that you should discuss him, not Canon Takan. Do you think he is trying to cover a print of the constructive threat or cover a print of, you know, trying to make that or what that woman, because what he assumed that that woman might be coming to discuss about him? He want to familiarize it. What do you think in that regard, please? For me, that, that section of statement is for the audience. He made those statements for the audience. What, yes. Why do I say that? One, he's trying to give them a narrative to play. His people, his followers. Mm. They will start telling you, oh, he was looking out for Canon Takan. He was not concerned about himself because he had nothing to hide. That's the psychology there which is yes. reverse psychology. He's being deceptive. Mm -hmm. Again, if you watch the whole thing, even there, he couldn't look at the camera. He was still looking down. Exactly. Like I, I advise all of us, go on the internet, just type it, a non-verbal communication. How you can dictate somebody is lying through the movement of their eyelids. You will see what I'm telling you is not hidden. Even though I took a class on it, it's not a hidden thing, it's, in, it's there. You can even learn it yourself. It will help you when somebody is, you're having a conversation with somebody, you learn when the person is trying or trying to... into this program. So watch him and you see him looking like he's looking in distance place. He's trying to formulate the lies. He's looking down, looking in distance place. And even when you see Was him move his head, big. he's still struggling to, you know, bring his lies together to dish them out and you can see how uncomfortable he is how he's like somebody in a straight jacket he's guarding things he's guarding information he's protecting something these are the things you take away so that one those ones were for the audience he has nothing to do with the first lady he was trying to give them a narrative I am, for me, I'm a, as clean as a whistle. I am only being a good advocate. I'm trying to protect the family. Oh, wow. I don't want this woman to go there and scatter the table for the family because I care about the family. That is why I try to bring in questions like, you care about this family. What have been your activities? What have you done? How have you expressed your care, your love? Even as recent as two days ago, you care for this family. All this nonsense, Canon Takano has been, because this guy was aware that Mazi was kidnapped in Kenya. I believe, this is my own uh, perspective. They have, this guy has been working with them, because I hear some people sometimes say, oh, when they kidnapped Mazi, that was when Ekperima came into the show. No. All of them, the major key players, Nelly, uh, 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 Madam Oibo, Ekperema, Rabbit, Bridget, and some other ones I may not know now because this thing has layers. The main masterminds are in Nigeria. Some of them might be here in the United States, I don't know. But the main masterminds, those who were the, who are the ones that have been uh, bankrolling them, paying them, they are not here. They are in Nigeria. They were the ones that recruited these people. I do not believe, this is my own analysis, I may be wrong, but I do not believe that at the time of recruitment, they knew one another. No. 
Because when you go and watch and see how even FBI, CIA, or even criminal gangs, when they recruit their uh, uh, hit men and women, they don't want you to know yourselves. They will recruit you, but at the time when they want to activate you, they will tell you, contact this person. Tell the person, I sent you. They will tell you the details of your own activities. That's how they function. That's when they. So my belief is that once Mazi was kidnapped in Kenya, all the sleeping cells were now activated. That's when they began to know themselves. But they have been on the mission. It didn't just start. Because why am I saying it? When you listen to these Umwada people, as early as the week Mazi was extraordinary rendition, they were already discussing our finances with the experiment. It's not somebody you just brought in. So what I'm trying to say here is, if I'm analyzing what happened, the eight days of Mazi in Kenya, once Mazi was kidnapped, because Kanata had not debunked this story, multiple people have come out to say he was contacted. He continued to lie. The argument is why? Because he wanted Mazi to be killed there. And one of the chilling part of this story or his responses is this one when he said he was on the mountain praying. There are two, two reasons there. One, that story will pan out easily because everybody knows that Mazi loves to pray. And most of the time he likes to go on isolated places to seek God. So that story will fly quick. Number two, if Mazi was, they had succeeded in killing Mazi, I believe that the body of Mazi would have been found in a bush. That would have been a perfect alibi. Oh, either he was kidnapped by kidnappers, they took him there, they killed him, or, you know, he was there praying and wild animals or whatever, or criminals found him there and killed him. That would have been a perfect cover. That was why he chose that particular story. But what I'm going, I'm not dealing with that now, but what I'm, where I'm going now is that at that time, Ekwerima was activated, was what I mean, even if he didn't know Kano Takano, they were connected at that moment when Mazi was kidnapped. So why Mazi was in the hands of these criminals in Kenya, Ekwerima knew. He knew. So there's a lot he's afraid of. He didn't just come in. So he knows his activities with that with my with Canon that goes way back. And if you can unravel Canon that Canon, it will lead you to him. That's the psychology he's playing. So if I know that you and I went robbery, and that if the people can get at you. They can trace you back to me. This is how some criminals behave. I will eliminate you. In this case, he cannot eliminate Kano. So what he's trying to do is to protect Kano Takano. Because any story, if even though I believe that that's not what our queen is coming to do. If our queen now is coming to tell a story about Ekberima, some people will not believe her. Some people will believe her because the question becomes, how do you know him? How did you get to know him? How, what are your, the source of your information? So it will not carry that much weight. Some people will say it's a lie. But if she says something about the family members, they're going to be more believable. Then if that family member is a part of this bullshit that Simon is doing, don't you see that Simon's name will be directly connected or indirectly? So he's trying to protect himself. It has nothing to do with uh, uh Kano Takano, but this is something he's throwing to the population to chew it, have something to go with to defend him and to make it look like as for me, as I'm a, I'm a, I'm as clean as a whistle, but hey, I'm trying to be objective, I'm trying to be a good advocacy, I'm trying to protect this family from tearing itself. Meanwhile, this is the same family that is trashing this woman, shredding this woman have no regard for her, have never given a qualm, don't even care. Have not even shown us that they truly care for this woman. All they do, 
by not speaking or even invoking her name in a good way. All they're doing behind the veil is trashing this woman, calling her every derogatory name from prostitute to everything. You see that woman that came out during the time they then came out, we are calling her a prostitute. It did not generate from them. Mazi's family members were part of the people that engineered these people, told them to go ahead and do that. Take this to the bank and they will catch you. Thank you. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Mazi, unmute yourself. You are spot on. Thank you very much. Spot on. Because if it is not from family member, how did, did they know she moved from where she is living in London? That all of them, they don't know where she is anymore. Exactly. And they were asking questions. How did she get money to move away from where exactly. she stays? And yeah. why were they you know, monitoring her to see, why she, to see when she moved? Yeah. Does it mean they want to go on the family member one? They were trying to discredit her, tarnish her, make it relevant, throw that story so that the Afrans begin to dislike her. That was another thing they were playing there. Yes. So that when she come out, and that is why when those with this unqualified woman, this woman that is rotten as a gutter, Paulo was so fierce. She first of all told you she was a prostitute. Okay. Yeah. She said she said she was a professional prostitute. You know, then when we begin to launch the account uh, attack on our, uh, our, our first lady, none mm. of the family members stood up to say, shut up, you can't do this. Now he's like, but he might say our wife. He did not realize she was their wife then. Yeah. Somebody called your wife a prostitute, Ekperima. you didn't say a word. <laughs> your answer was rather, I don't control what people say or do. Now she's our wife because you think you can manipulate her. No, you can't. Mm. She's not that. Um, Marian Heather, um, yeah. let's hold that one there. We will continue with it. There is somebody who has been holding on for a very long time. Um, uh, the caller, you have two minutes to round up, please. Uh, the caller on the line, your name and where you're calling from, please. Mazi, George Money. Good evening. I'm Chisum Ejika by name. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Chisum. Okay, okay. Um, I greet you all. And I, good day. Day well. Hey, well, my brother. God bless you. Uh, um, uh, uh -huh. This guy has shot himself on the leg. He shot the boot legs. In boot legs, he shot the boot side. This guy has no shame. This guy has done things, done things to the extent that he don't even know what he's doing again. He has bathed in the market square naked. What concerns him with our leader wife? Is he a lawyer to our leader or the mass or, or the mass spoke, mass speaking to our leader wife? What is his business with our leader's wife? Somebody you have not even know, you don't even you don't even know her. You don't even know anything about her. And he has those that has worked with the husband for over ten years, has never come out to issue a warning. You know that this guy is warning our leader's wife to issue a warning that say he's talking soft. Who are you to speak? Say you are talking soft to her. <laughs> so what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Eh? Say you are talking, you're being soft. You're being soft because if it's no person like Kanonta and the family, uh, if no person like Kanonta give him that God to speak about our leader's wife, he doesn't have that right to speak about our leader's wife. If Kanonta is not in the plan of this thing, Kanonta could have come out and challenge him mm. because it's his brother's point. I will keep quiet. I will come out to challenge you, ask you why. These guys were all there. They called her names. None of them stand up. The brothers, the brothers, none of them stand up. People that stand up and start speaking, but start to talk about them is IPOB. And that is why our leader said that the family he has is IPOB. 
that this IPOB are great people, that he has never seen people like IPOB all his lifetime. Our leader said it. So the family he has is an IPOB. And that's why IPOB are ready to defend him, to die for him, and to do anything for him. IPOB are ready to do anything for our leader. Yeah. These guys have no shame. A guilty conscience, fear no accusation. A clear conscience, fear no accusation. Because he's guilty. If he's not guilty, why did he run to come out and start talking? Start telling our leader wife how to how to how to use her word. You are telling somebody, a matured woman, how to use her word. And she the woman is even more educated than you, more even more brilliant and Look at all the whole years, the years that have been speaking everything about her. She has never come out to say it happened like this, it's like this, it's like this, it's like this. Upon all everything, go and watch that woman interview, 216, 217. You will see what is coming out from that woman's mouth. You will know that that woman were wired for this, for, for, for our leader. Yes. She was wired for our leader. If this woman are not wired for our leader, I think we are IPOB Eastern, it's not where we are supposed to be. Because the woman will be discouraging her for a lot of things. And every man, every man that kept a woman, wife in the house, know that when you start having problem with your wife to go out for work, you know that very day will not be sweet for you. I don't know if it happened to any other person, some men. But on my own side, you know I this pick things. the water with my wife in the morning. He always, I always see that day as a bad day for me. That's how. No matter how I try, mm. no matter how I try to make to make things work, it will not work. So I stop it to pick water with her in the morning. Mm. Whatever she do, I would like to laugh and go. So if this woman is not made for our leader, we are IPO the Eastern is not where we're supposed to be. Exactly. And these people, upon her birthday, I didn't see any of them came out to congratulate her. They know that this woman, husband, is not around. Who is the next person? You are living in the same Europe with her, Kalonta. From Germany to UK, how many hours will you be? You have paper. It's a train. Go. How, yes. With a train, you can enter. How many times have you go and visit your brother and wife and see those children, those in, those in kids, and see them? And stay with them like one hour or stay with them two hours, take them out and bring them back. Those things that their father used to do for them. How many times have you tried to do such a thing? The answer is no. Instead, they are looking where she is, where she back enter, for them to go and do one thing rubbish to her. Do we need to ask who sell our leader? Do we need to ask anything again? These people have, these people have come out. The church has judged themselves. They have come out to show who they are. So there is nothing again hidden. Everything has come out. Anybody waiting for our leader to come and say, our leader will say this person, this person. We have already know the people. I keep on saying it. If this man came to Asia, I don't think he will go back. I am as so maybe he can stop. If this man come to Asia, he will not go back. Except he will come to where we will not see him. If he come, he will not go back. Because our people are supposed to learn how to be suicide, suicidal. That's why they are afraid of all these Muslims. If we have never learned how to be suicidal, anyone that talk ill about our own person, we show the person example. All of them will sit, will sit back. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me round up. Let me round up. <laughs> There's nothing to hidden. Ojo Zokalo, he has phone call of Ojo Zokalo. Ojo Zokalo is who they are contacting, is the person that are contacting Kano. Do you understand? Because if when Lolo is alive, when the mother of our leader is alive, when Ojo Zokalo come, the mother will say, go and talk to my son. He's an adult. Don't ask me to talk. I think when this man is going, Kanonta will be following him for back to collect complimentary card and start saying, I will do the work. <laughs> I will do, just like, I will do the work. Like this. Let me stop here. Thank you. God bless you, people. I stop here so far. Thank you very much. I stop here so far. Thank you very much. But if I start there, as he did me for Marty, you know, we'll end today. I stop here. Thank you, Marty. You know, uh, uh, Marty, no, Marty, no, Marty, no, Marty, no, Marty, no, Marty, let me say this now. I mean, this is a thought that I have had for some time, but I'm going to use mm. this forum right now because of what our brother Chisom said. It kind of refreshed my memory. But let me just yes. drop this uh, thought, pro uh, thought process. You know, there's a story, uh, not a story, there was an answer. I don't know who brought that story. 
I don't know whether it was a Jimon for whether it was a Jimon. I don't know. But there was a time, because I'm using what happened recently, that, that was where my mind started going back to bring this argument. It's an argument, I'll call it. It's a theory I'm forming in my head. You know, some people call me conspiracy theorist. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> but having said that, there was a time when there was a heat early, early last year. It was, you know, the heat was on social media. Who sold our leader? Who sold our leader? Blah, blah, blah. And then it began to narrow down. That's when Nelly was hammering them. And they couldn't say a thing, no. They couldn't, they couldn't come out to make a statement or even write, increase the volume, underplay the volume, or call anybody mm. a, a recharge card me, a war, media warrior. They couldn't do that. The names were Kano Takano, Nene Anya, and who else? There were three names. They were, and then the secretary. These three two people, Nelly was hammering them. Then from nowhere out of the blue, is I heard that a statement was issued. I would like to investigate who really propelled that statement. The Amazi has said that the Neneanya, Kanon Takano, and the secretary were not the ones that sold him. I would like to know. Did Mazi really, really issue those statements? There should be an investigation. Did Mazi say something else? And people came out to make this statement to quell that fire, to put that fire off. Because some people were beginning now to pay attention to these three elements. I call them elements. Okay? So the heat was blazing on them. But that single statement put cold water on that statement. Why am I saying this? When I started thinking about this, was the recent announcement, when we began to fight back of what, what Master Prophet was doing, a similar statement was issued by a Jumako, which now we found that it wasn't really what Mazi said. If you were the way he worded it, that is what advertisers do. That is what uh, researchers do. If I want to do a survey, it depends on whose line outside I am. That's the way I will word my words. I will ask the same question, but I am expecting you. I'm pushing you to answer to what I want you to answer without telling you. Ejumako used the language. Those fighting in the media without saying recharge card media warriors and a lot of us were able to decode that that he was trying now to put fire off from the attack that was coming on canon takano madame Nayanya and master prophet that was what from. made me to start thinking if a Jimako can twist words can bring this thing because now i understood now that that was not really the message that came that Mazi no, Mazi never, Mazi never send that message. Exactly. So if they can do this, how am I sure it was not done before? That is when I started thinking. Because criminals will always go to something they're familiar with. Exactly. That is why if you somebody like all these uh, jailbreakers go and the way they are found easily in, a, in the America here, go and begin to look for locations they were familiar with they would definitely go to one of them definitely because they don't have any other place to go a criminal will always operate on the idea that they think that worked before they will always up that is why i'm asking this question whether it was a jimofo or a jimoko if it was a jimofo i would see it in the from the perspective he was trying to calm the tension down. But that Mazi made that statement, I am still holding my reservations until Mazi came out. Because that was what made us to come out, begin to fight. And that was the main argument. Even Master Prophet started saying, oh, have you seen it? I mean, Mazi have issued and said that these people did not sell me. It is, he perpetrated the argument. And that was how that tension calmed down. Because my argument became or becomes if Mazi, 
if Mazi is making this statement or made that statement, was Mazi aware that Kaimonta knew that he was in enemy's hand and did not disclose it to DOS? Was Mazi informed before he made that statement? Was Mazi aware that when he was in the hands of the Kenyan authorities with Nigerian craziness, did Mazi, was he informed that his own secretary was advised by his brother or cousin Kano Takano to continue to be tweeting with a Twitter handle? Of, yes, these are all cover-ups. We have to ask these questions. This thing has been bothering me, but each time I'm not seeing the right for it. When am I it looks this? like tweeting to buy time. Yes. This do just like a kind of was buying time by lying to people. So because mm. he felt that lying to them, people might start, okay, even if Mazi is on the mountains, can I talk to him a little bit? But if somebody can be tweeting on behalf of Mazi, and we know that this person was the person that handles Mazi's Twitter, he's gonna come now. No, oh, he's okay, he's he's the one tweeting, he's instructing her to tweet. And remember that Simon was also it looks like Simon was also admin to that account i don't know maybe you know you know like he i was said admin, he was people. complaining one time that they removed him from the account so my brother will have to do research and maybe do a program and he i think it was brought a sister carol cara that made that call on uh Kenga said i would love sister marian and brother uh mazi uh george money or any other person to make analysis on the eight days of Mazi in Kenya. This is what I'm trying to bring out now. Even when she made that, I said, hmm, somebody's thinking what I'm thinking. Because it was that statement that Mazi said, these three people did not sell him that, made us to come and fought like gallant soldiers we are, and we put the fire off, gave them a breather. And that is why I got so mad when that woman came out and said, increase the volume that is why i got really mad on her we saved your ass from being butchered off you couldn't defend yourself and they threw that mix that mazi said because they know how much we value mazi's statement everybody backed off saved them from what was about to swallow them and then master prophet trumpeted it blew it up now after we have finished fighting the same woman is calling the same people recharge card media warrior and increase the volume so this is something some of us need to go back and do some rethinking research you will find because out they, these people have been because, working from the onset that is why I'm, what i'm trying to say they have been working from think, the onset they knew what happened to Mansi. don't you think the reason why they have they were audacious to call the media warriors recharge card media warrior because they were given recharge card to you know to sell onion do because you know what is recharge card is not necessarily recharge card now they were the given that that card. That the people this would have been sponsored you know giving monetary values or whatever yes i understand that they were giving these things to sell onion do and to their greatest surprise because they do not know who and who are the member of their syndicate you know because they were not recruited once or in the same place in the that's same what i'm space. telling you it was after it happened because again go back to nelly's statement where he was trying to bring mazi moru in he will tell you the people he has she has spoken to you can get from that tape that immediately this thing happened bam information was given to her and those who were involved in the immediate you know organization of the stellar or mercy her mm. own role was to campaign and begin to bring everybody together that is when you go back and listen to that voice note that's what you will get in totality her role was to do what begin to bring everybody together that is where i began to understand that they were not all recruited at the same time but they knew yeah. they do exist they were some of them were sleeper cells some of them have already connected themselves like madame Uibo and co those ones we are working but somebody like Ekperima and other ones were sleeper cells okay so when this happened 
the one of the primary job of Nelly was to begin to bring everybody together, wake up the sleeper self, let everybody get to know themselves and realize we are in this together. Okay. And some of them were like, wow, so you are involved. Yes. So that is why she told you, I don't know where she got the knowledge. I don't know where she gave impetus to think that Mazin Woru was part of it. If not, ask yourself, why would she be talking to Mazin Woru? Or maybe they told them, you know, Mazin Woru is part of the thing that must be captured after Mazin is down to Spot completely on. get the structure, you know? So they have they themselves know themselves but her job is she's a recruiter and then to person to bring the whole thing an organizer to organize everything so now mazi has been captured she was aware of it the cells the sleeper slayers have been activated but you need people in dos to bring them in as to, so that you can complete this situation you get it so that was why she went to mazi she said i have spoken to him I have been talking to him. He may pretend that he doesn't talk to me. When somebody asks him, you mean you call? He said, yes, I do speak to him. At those moments, she had not completely revealed her mission. She was doing what you call walking on the periphery, on the perimeter, yes. trying to psych Mazin Woru to see where his mind or his mind was. And Mazin yeah, Woru himself, Mazin Woru himself, he said, I will call Mazin Woru. He hear me at where I will argue Laura Albibe. He himself, he himself, he's smart. So he himself was watching her to understand what angle she was coming from. She couldn't, she, did, she couldn't decode his weakness, his weak spot. Yeah, the, the, this is the point. Mazin Woru, I don't know his background, but I can tell you that guy is good in criminal knowledge, okay? Not in a negative way, but he has an insight. Because how do you hmm. decode even when you're dealing with a double agent? You allow them in a little bit. You give them some information you think they may need, but you don't give them a whole lot. Because if you hmm. do not talk to them at all, they will not open up for you. So you really yes. want to go inside their mind to understand where they're coming from, to understand who they are. So if they come hmm. immediately and tell you, ah, brother, we, 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 you know, this is what is on the right. Say, no, 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 I don't want a part of it. You have shut them off. Mm. you want to tell them say well you know what is it you know let me know maybe i may be interested or you give them that kind of impression that you may work with them then they will unload every truth to you then you can you know so it's called foot in the door so amazing world because she's telling you that she has spoken to amazing world once or twice i don't know their conversation but at that time as she was probing the mind of mazi moru mazi moru was probing her mind too is the clever will get it the clever one will get it so on that day she got frustrated was the day she felt she knew or she had an idea or that she believed that Mazin Woru might walk with them she opened up her mouth and began to spill the beans because there she was you hear her say that he everything was going well the whole conversation was going but immediately i mentioned Ekperima. That tells you that Ekperima has been in the game. Yeah. All hell broke Sleep loose. Well. Yeah. And this were a few days. This thing happened to our Hamadiki. He said, immediately I mentioned Ekperima. Ekperima. All hell broke, oh, no, broke, broke loose. So at that moment, she knew she had spoken too much to Mazi Moru. And that Mazi Moru mm -hmm. was not going to ever be part of this game. That was when she and they realized she might be, be, be recorded as well. Exactly. So that is why now she wants to go out and control the narrative. She came and started shouting, DOS Mazin Woru sold our Hamadike. She was trying to get that is the reason game. why I yeah. say you 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 know proactiveness <laughs> of a criminal gives you a prima facie. Yeah. So that's the game that played that's there. How so she came out to start that's blowing trumpet. Oh, the DOS, this is the Moru, they are criminals. Which later on she retracted when she fell out with fell off with uh, Ekperima and said that these people they don't really do it. I was lying on them. She came out and debunked herself. So that was um, what so going many on. Occasions. Has worked with them, has agreed with them. 
the next action will be they have gotten Mazin Woru, which is ESN on their side. The next action mm. would have been to work with Mazin Woru to destabilize the rest of the DOS, especially get rid of Mazin Edozim. That is why I come out each time swinging with everything I can and I have. When anybody tries to throw any stone at Mazin, uh, 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 um, Edozim or Mazin Woru or any member of DOS, I personally will come out and began to swing at that person because I have an inclination, an inside in depth analysis of what went on at the initial stage. Our people forget, go back and listen. That particular voice note carries the letter of weight, it will tell you everything you need to know about these people. It that, does, yes. So that is why I don't care whether my idea those is good, bad, and ugly. I don't care whether any member of DOS. I don't care. I will protect that institution. That institution I will protect with everything I have. But if you decide to be like uh, to destabilize the same institution, I will fight you too. Because my fight is not about you. I don't know you. I don't care about you. But you see this structure, this institution, that is my mission. Because I exactly. have an idea what they are trying to do. They Man, have no relationship. And we must all be aware of this. Thank you. That is the way it is. And uh, what I'm Marian heard of, there is. I know we have a lot of uh, exposition at hand that we're investigating. And the more we are taking time in this in those uh, investigation, the more more is coming out. You know, I have um I have been having a discussion. You know, I've been having a, a discussion with a, a Jewish woman. You know, a Jewish woman. And there are many things, you know, we rub mine together. We, we you know, I actually brainstormed uh, within, navigate through all her informations. And then there are many things I discovered with regards to what transpired in African colonization. Now, and then there is a, I want us to make out time also to squeeze some part of these things in, you know, part of what transpired. This Bible spiritualism and religious, religious, uh, religiosity, and we need to connect this dot with regards to because if you look at it like i always say because they made yahweh yeshua to look as if he was not a human being flesh and blood which is now making us to look for what we are that is in now in over i am not turning if i am not turning i am around who can because because of the way this bible was translated and was given to us now i want us to make time also to find a time to talk about that path i can even in, um, invite the jewish woman if she will agree with me to come to awesome. program. First of all, is she a Messianic Jew or she's a Orthodox Jew? I think she is Orthodox Jew. Yeah, she will she's not be Messianic Orthodox because Jew. Messianic uh, Jews will not share that. But what she said is true. But, you know, another thing I you know, I just want to say, Yahweh is not Yeshua. Yeshua is not Yahweh. That's it. So I will leave it there. Yes. Then... Um, um with regards to this um what we have i believe we have done justice to it yeah and uh, we need to actually uh, move on and prepare for the days ahead because remember there and is something i think yeah, before you, like, you go quickly on that and the subject matter you just dropped another thing i may drop is uh maybe our people to go and do some researches before whenever the program is going to be aired yeshua was not the first person that performed all the miracles attributed to him there mm. were other men spiritual men called them spiritual men whatever they have come and gone continue to come and go so that's what people must understand 
It's just that these people told their story just to, you know, when you tell your story, you make yourself a hero or a heroine. Mm -hmm. um, and with all due respect to Christians, but what I'm, that's why I'm saying it is to go and do your researches. Um, there were people, if you read some other articles, you know, other uh, scriptures, scriptural books that were not canonized, you will see there were other people that came before him, even in that particular uh, Jewish community, that performed literally the same thing, or even, even somebody like even John the Baptist, Elijah, Elisha, they all did great miracles. And if Egypt decide to write their own story, create their own philosophy, and which is religion, and then we're able to conquer people, dominate them, and institute their own way of life, it's going to be the story you're going to be hearing is about the pyramid, you're going to be hearing about the agriculture and everything, their way of life. That's really what the Bible is about. That's why they make references, Corinthians, all these places. That's why they definitely it is not spiritual. No, so I'm coming. So if there were there are some spiritual element of it, I will not completely say there are, there are, there is a there is yeah, but it's, but... you know that's a confusion there. So, but anyway, mm. I'm dealing strictly on this emotional part of it, which is what people are gluing onto and negating the spiritual part of it, you know. Um which is not it's a bit. So what I was trying to say, if Egypt, if you have, if I have to write about Egyptology, their spiritualism and all that, um, somebody like Imhotep, people can go and type his name, Imhotep would have been regarded as a messiah because even after his death, people were excavating his bone, crushing it, drinking it, believing that it had medicinal quality, healing quality. His burial ground, people were collecting sand from it, using it. People were going to the burial site where he was buried. They were going there praying and believing that he had healing quality, just like people talk about the saints now. So do you have things like that? It's just because when your own value, your own history is not packaged well and promoted, and then you have an upper hand, then your history is worthless. It's one of the things we are fighting about getting our Biafra so that we can tell our own story. When the story yes. of Biafra will be told, Omadike is a messiah. That's who he is. Yes. It's not really the truth yes. when they say a messiah. There are many messiahs. They have come and gone. They will continue mm. to come. And I'm going to leave us with this portion of the Bible to go and read it. I didn't write it. If people can go to the book of Hebrew, chapter 7, Read the whole of chapter 7 and try, please, to read chapter 8, 2. When you finish reading, study it. Then I'm going to give you one or two words to look at. You will see where it starts to tell you. There have been many orders. Look at those orders as these people I'm talking about, these special people, Messiahs. It's a time, a, par you know, a paradigm shift in a society, in nature. When nature is trying to rejuvenate, do something new. You will see it there, where in the argument was, if the order of Melchizedek was perfect, there wouldn't have been a need for a new order in the person of Yeshua. So others have- Yes, because even in that Hebrew, yeah. in that Hebrew 7, 14, in by verse 14 of it, it, say, it talks about how Yahweh Yeshua came by and the, that the order His of name is Yeshua. I don't know why they put it that Yahweh. Yahweh is he's not a Yahweh is God the Almighty. Yeshua is the person that invoking at Jesus Christ. So that person that yes. is calling Yahweh Yeshua, there's nothing like that. His name is Yeshua. Yahweh is Yeshua. Almighty God. But let's move on. Then he said it it says that it is an evidence that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which the Melchizedek never spoke about priesthood. Then, you know, the, I don't know why the, it talks about Mech, uh, Melchizedek never spoke about priesthood. No, from he was the saying, lineage. Actually, he's saying that Melchizedek, just like Melchizedek came, his order came, and he was never, he didn't come through a lineage of priesthood. He was trying to Which compare. Is, that place was trying to compare the order of Melchizedek with the order of Yeshua. That just like the order of Melchizedek did not come through the lineage of priesthood, 
the order mm. of Yeshua did not come through the order of priesthood because at the time the Yeshua came, the you had the Levites. You had the Levites. The priesthood were coming from them, not from the tribe yes. of Judah. But yet mm. he was appointed a high priest. He's talking about high priest now. High priest mm. is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a regular priest. High priest. There are two dif there are different kinds of priests. Even in the Judaic, Judaic uh, this thing, where you go there and read the Torah, you have a high priest. You have the regular priest. The high priest is when you invoke people like Melchizedek, you invoke people like Eli. They were only invoked, their names were only invoked once in a year during the time of atonement. They were the ones responsible for atoning the sins of men. Okay? Those then you have the, the regular priest that conducted the at the you have the regular priest that conducted the synagogue from, from in every lower Sabbath to every lower Sabbath. So, but where mm. I'm talking about a high priest, these are the appointed ones. These are the anointed ones. That's what Messiah means. The anointed one. The anointed one to come in to do. That is why Mars, when they said, he's our savior. He's a savior. He's anointed one. The hand of God is on him. The spirit of the living God is on him. If you believe, you know, I'm coming from the Bible point of view. The, hand, the spirit of God is upon him. Just like said, the spirit of God is upon me. He has given me the power to do this, do this. I'm not saying all of us do not have the spirit of God. But let's go back. If you go back to the book of Corinthians, I'm not trying to minister here because you know, I, I, I did the Bible for a long time, for some time, but I study that book. But you find where it's telling you that we are all clay of jar filled with the treasure. Everybody has a spirit, okay? Everybody come out with their own gift. Even the book of Ephesians, you see there that we all have different gifts. There, there are some of us, people that are unique. This is what I'm talking about. You can qualify as high priest or Messiah. When they are coming in, they have more than one or two gifts. These gifts are spirits. The gift of God are spirit. God is a spirit. His gifts are spiritual. So when you see this individual, they are multifaceted. And when you hear them speak, you feel the power in them. The, that particular prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, they must have the spirit of prophecy. They must have the spirit of uh, uh, healing through their words or even when they do it. I can tell you today, imagine man that comes out and wants to pray for people and lay hands, they will receive it because the quality is there. Whether he's using it or not, it is there. So there are unique qualities you will see embedded in these individuals. And there are more than two, three, four. To be able to allow them to you know, advocate this mission God has mandated them to be. That's why they're called Savior. Because they're coming for a purpose. They're coming to set things different. Change the status quo. They're coming to bring a new dimension. There's a paradigm shift. Go to the book of Hebrews 7, 8. You will see what I'm calling out. I'm just giving you guys this point so that when you begin to read it, you see what I'm saying. He will even tell you that many others have come. Many messiahs have come. But the only thing that what the Christians smartly did was to begin to tell you that the only thing that this particular messiah resurrected from death. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to argue. I wasn't there. But that's their only argument that will separate this particular messiah from Every other message that have been coming and going. And I will leave this because we are not treating religion. You know, you know, that is the reason why I said that we need to make our time to talk about this. Because when they talk about, they also talked about Holy Ghost. They also talked about Holy Ghost. That is the reason why so many people are being confused. And I keep lamenting this, that the reason why they brought this context to us, so that we will continue to celebrate our the wrong ones and undermine the the Messiah when we see him. Yeah, and that is the reason why they brought the, the, the that concept of telling you. If you not not interject, but if you pay attention, ask yourself a question: Why are all the so-called leaders, from the president to the least of them, afraid of? Mazi Nandi kind of our Amadike one. He's not taller than them. He doesn't have muscle like them. He's not even go to you've never seen him display him walking in the gym like a perima. He never told you he's better than you. He's not the one that had the most education. 
but when he opens his mouth and speaks, they vibrate. Because they themselves are sensing, some of them are seeing, some of them are designing the qualities in him. That's what they're afraid of. Hmm. That is what they're afraid of. Some of them know what I'm talking about. They know that way. They do, of course. I'm they telling do. you. Some of them are spiritual. People that we are dealing with. They know. Exactly. Yourself, why are they afraid of this one man? What can he do? Go now and check all the leaders, all the messiahs that have come and gone. It's the same way. It is not about their build. It is not about it. That's why the Bible, let me use the Bible now to end it up. Said, it is not by might. It is not by power. It's only by the spirit of the living God. That energy, that is what is carrying them. They know yeah. the potential. They know the possibility. They know it is genuine. They know it is ordained. They know it's on a mission. And they know they cannot stop the moving train. God bless you all. So, um, the, the, the moral of this, uh, what uh, made us to actually come to this path is about the, the things, the scripture. You know, because there is an extent you will understand. If you can call a scripture, a, if you can call a scripture, a spirit, or everything in scripture is spiritual. Now, it means that you can call the constitution of your nation spiritual. That's what it is. Because now, if you have a law in your country where you dwell, that if you pass a red, a red light in the traffic light, you might have accident and you are at fault. Now, Bible telling you, if you kill another, you will be killed. Or if you steal, you will be killed or you will be incarcerated. You, you'll be punished. Let's use the word punished. You'll be punished. Punished, yes. What do you think is different from both? There is nothing different from them. But everything, they spiritualize everything so that you will be looking for what is next to you on top of the, the firmament. You'll be looking for it on top of the firmament when it is not there. Not it is right there. next to you. And I had, I, there was a place I read recently where somebody said, I think it's one of these crazy pastors or this crazy um, individual that claimed they're born again. Recently, I saw it on Facebook said, oh, uh, why he's angry at what IPOB is doing is because people are reverencing or worshiping somebody that did not die for them. But the person that died for them they don't want to worship the that is talking about who told him that story how did you understand it and I, I read it somewhere the person said that so the person was referencing like people are worshiping mazi who did not die for them but jesus mm -hmm. christ that died for them they are not that's that's the story so i didn't if i had the opportunity i would have asked the person i said okay you were told that jesus died did you see him die exactly. i don't want to go and arguments like that it was a story that was told to you. You didn't see it. You did not witness it. You're not a witness. Okay. He died, he resurrected. You did not see it. You did not witness it. It was a story that passed down onto you for thousands of years. And we know that the only true, true source of a story, a story that is true and pure, is the primary source. Once a story leaves the primary source, a lot of things begin to add and be removed from it. It's no more authentic. So now this story have come thousands of years and you want to bet your life on it. But the story you are seeing playing before your own eyes. You don't want to believe you it. You don't want to Even that will work get me I say, I wish I can get into a debate room with this individual. This man, you don't want to recognize our oh, Hamadike one, has thrown everything that makes his life to be. He has control on. He can say, make a statement today, and all those things will be given back to him. He 
he was not hungry. He has a family, young family that is supposed to be developing. You are sitting somewhere enjoying your own. He's a British citizen, so he's not. He can stay there and live and die and enjoy all the, you know, goodies that is in that country. He's a citizen, so he has no business coming to advocate for you to liberate you. Not only is he saying it, he's walking the walks. Allow yes. his life to be thrown into the den of wolves. Not first time. The first time you can say maybe he didn't know what he was bargaining for. He went in the first time. He tested it. He was not sweet. He was bitter. He came out. He went in the second time. He tested it. It was even harder. He came out. They came to take his life, which has no spare. Somehow, miraculously, to let you know the hands of all my if there's God, nature is unrested on this young man. Mazi had no business escaping that onslaught that day. I know that was why I brought the story, the spiritual story on your last program. Yes, some have to die for some to live. It doesn't mean that those that died died an unjustified death, or that their reason for dying. It's a waste. But that's the law of nature. 28 lives were mulled down for Mazi to live, to accomplish the purpose he's been serving. Have you forgotten, um, uh, Marian, in this regard now, let us now bring it to the concept of when, um, to this um, context of uh, when Europeans came to this, this uh, part of the world uh, um, called Africa. That's part of the world called Africa. Now, when you you contextualize it to the that uh, colonialism. You understand that these people, many and many and many of them died. Yes, they did. This is law of back. nature. Somebody they has to die for board. somebody to live. Somebody has to succeed for somebody exactly. to not to succeed. But let me finish my thought. Then you exactly. come in. Then we can wrap up because I'm watching my time. So this man escaped death. I call it somebody escaping with fire burning behind your behind. He escaped somehow. I'm sure he can't even explain how he escaped. He exactly. cannot explain it. I believe when it all done, he looked at it and said, you mean I'm still alive? <laughs> he did not yeah. stop him. He came back blazing more. Knowing the consequences, that is where I'm going now. He has been away. He has been exposed. So the consequences of his action in which most people would have want, want, thrown in the towel most people would have lied low oh my god i escaped i am not gonna attract this kind of heat on me again rather he came up blazing raised the temperature and he's doing all these things not for him because where he is he can live a very good life his children and exactly. They are British citizens. Then what do you call a savior? That was why I invoke the quality of a tourism. These people are saviors. They will continue to come and go. The one playing in your own life, defending your life, trying to give you a better life. Quality of wasn't that what Yeshua came to do? Wasn't that what Yeshua came and did for the Israelites? Because they were being marginalized. The Jews were subjugated by the Romans. Compare the two stories. He came to give you a light of knowledge that will And that, let me tell you, my brother, let me finish. That was where the some, most of those Jews around him misunderstood him. The same thing our people are doing now. When he came and told them, I'm coming to give you liberation, they misunderstood him. He was speaking to their psychic. He was trying to make them to realize that, that just like every other human being, defend yourself, liberate yourself. They were expecting him to come with armies from heaven to defend them. And when he yeah. couldn't do that to them, he lied, he failed. He's playing before our own eyes today. Mm. At the fullness of time, when Biafra comes, I'm going to write our story. How are you going to qualify? Oh, my DK one. The Messiah. 
Exactly. That does not mean he's a God. Exactly. He's still human. But the qualities of the living God were infused in him to be used yes. to liberate us because our cries have touched wherever heaven is or God is. When I share this word with people, when I minister with people, well, I tell them that we are extension of God because we as human beings, that's the only way God can manifest in the physical realm. So what does he do? He will infuse those qualities in you, in me, to be able to carry out his mission. That is why even in their word of God, in their Bible it says, a willing vessel. Because man, exactly. he could still have these qualities. And because of what is going on, he will say, I can't do this. Father, it is too much. I am going to say goodbye to everybody. Have a wonderful day. God bless you, Marzi. Day one. Thank you very much for joining us. You are dragging us. me into a subject. I don't like. I don't, I'm not ready to share publicly. I don't want. We are dealing with the. That subject, is, is that subject I mean, is a very a, a subject. I don't want to bring religion. You know my. You know really. You know I. There's a platform I do that. No, this is not religiosity. This is freeing our minds from mental slavery, from lies that is being told. Yes. Decoding and okay. now extracting the truth. That's it is very important to this struggle because we need to know because there are people who are using pastorship to manipulate things that we are doing here. A lot of them. So if our people are exposed to the knowledge of the truth, there is no way they will buy those stories of these people using Bible to come and manipulate them. Bible is our activities of our lives, everyday life activities. But they saw how you understand it. They will use it to manipulate you, to exploit you, to destroy you, to engage cage you mentally. That you will be, you, you know, you will be crippled. Here you're supposed to fight. Where you're supposed to put your physicality, you are putting your spirituality. Exactly. Misplaced, misplaced priorities. Because again, like I said, we're human being, you know, when I again when I give one or two seminars somewhere. I tell people, look, make no mistake, we are, we have components as human beings. There's an emotional part of us, okay? You must satisfy it. That's where religion comes in. That philosophy, that psychology, it's emotions. We deal with it. There's a part of us. So I'm never going to discount it. But my argument, my anger, or my frustration that they are trying to wrap everything, make it to be all spiritual. There's a spiritual yeah. component of man. That you must satisfy too. And there's a physical part of man that you must satisfy too. That is what exactly. fullness is. Where you are able to satisfy each and every one of these three dimensional components of man without allowing one to override the other one, then you can say, I'm a balanced human being. In that case, you are able to deal with your emotional part, deal with your spiritual part, at the same time, deal with your physical part without allowing one to corrupt each other then you can say, I am balanced. That is what our people need to get. That is where we need to go. Not just our people, a whole lot of people. Because we are allowing our emotions to override every other thing. That is the problem. But there's a place for each and every one of them because that's who we are. The spiritual part of the man is seeking to understand, is seeking to reconnect the spiritual dimension. The emotional part of man wants to have that healing that satisfaction, the calmness of emotions to allow us to deal with stress issues, that must be recognized. The physical part of man, which is the casing, must be rightly fed, properly fed, physical things to sustain, to continue to host both the spiritual and the emotional part of us. That's who we are. So but when you when come and say the emotion should be able to take care of every, the, the physical and the spiritual. That's where we miss it. It cannot work. When we talk that about where we are, that's what they have been able to design. They still have churches. They still go to church. But they know church mm. will not solve all their problems. They still yes. pray. But they're not telling you that because they I pray, I have to do my nothing. They can't do that. You will still finish praying. If I'm looking for a job, I will finish praying. Then I will take myself and go and apply for somewhere that is physical, where they have a, a physical factory or work, workplace, and I apply. And it's a human being I'm dealing with there that's going to give me the job or not. 
In that case, I must have my resume, which we'll call curriculum vitae. I must have it that will qualify me to get position in that, to get that position I'm looking for. I cannot job because I prayed and fasted and I carry myself and go to a place where I don't even have the certification. I cannot be taken. It does not negate the power of God. God is still God. God still has power. He still moves. So because what they are doing is what is beginning to make some people begin to think that there is no force. I believe there's a God. There is a force. He uses force. our oh, physical so energy to move. Exactly. Who may put all these things in order, but in the spiritual realm and physical realm. But when you begin to act like he has to do everything for me, even things I'm supposed to think through, think out when he has given me mind, gave me the ability to interact, to reason. When I begin to sit down, I don't want to walk, take a walk or walk and because I pray in tongues and expect manna to fall from heaven. I am diminishing the power of God because in that case, when you have critics, they will look at you and say, all this time you have prayed, God did not move. He can't move because that's not where he's supposed to move. He's exactly. supposed to get up and get things done. You need to make him, you need to move by, you know, he moves through you. You exactly. must move for him to move. Exactly. That's he why said, Europeans, they, they, they have even churches. Even in the they Bible, the Bible never, people. you know, because they will come and quote, misquote them. That's why I say people should go and study the Bible. You, they'll give you some of this quotation, quotation, they'll misquote and say, it's God that gives you power to make wealth. No, 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 again, no God that brings wealth. <laughs> no. He gives you wisdom. He gives you power or wisdom to make, it doesn't give you the wealth. I, because the world is physical. My it's people perish for lack of knowledge. If God wants to operate here, he has to be looking for a will. He said, the eye of God or the eye of the Lord is looking to and fro, looking for whom to use. If God mm. want, can manifest physical, I'm not saying his presence is not felt, but if he has to, if he can manifest physically and get that thing like you are claiming or the pastors are telling you don't, then he will not need you and I here in the physical realm. Yeah, we are here for a purpose to be used day, to accomplish goes, his will, to be used to accomplish his purpose. If you believe in what the Bible, I'm even going according to the Bible. That's what I'm dealing with now. Now let's bring it here now, Marian Heda. Do you know what confuses our people every time they call Holy Ghost Holy Ghost without them knowing what is Holy Ghost? They don't know that Holy Ghost is the law that God gave to you. It is the law. Because even if you check it in Romans 2, Romans 8, 2 to 4, it tells you that the Holy Spirit is, is the, the law, for the law is spirit. And you come to Romans 7, 12, it tells you for wherefore the law is holy. So the law is Holy Spirit. Which if you obey the things of the law, it is physical things, it is it is physical energy that you need to apply to obey the things of the law for things to manifest within you. You need to go to work in order to make money. That is a law. You don't need to go and be in your house praying for Holy Ghost to bring you money. But now every time pastor is telling you I'm praying for you, when you are sick, you go to collect anointing oil. When he's sick, he, he enter private jet to go overseas. So who is fooling who here? That is the that is why we continue we must continue to be speaking and again like I said I'm giving us assignment to go and read the book of Hebrews chapter seven and eight they will see what I'm saying I'm not I didn't make them up I'm not making them up I didn't write the Bible but now that I have called them out they will see what I'm saying there have been orders there have been messiahs that have been coming and going and they will continue to come on the issue of what you're talking about if I begin to follow you on that I will call it a rabbit hole. It's going to bring me to a place I don't want to deal with now because, but I'm just going to put this, say this out quickly and I'll leave it. Yes, you're right in the sense that every spoken word is an energy, it's an entity. The words will speak or will write it A, B, C, D to whatever, one, two, three, they are alive, they are living entities. It's the only way you apply them, things happen. So laws are spoken words. Laws are written words. So yes. when you apply these written words, from my perspective and the school of thought I believe, which is what I do, part of what I do, 
when you speak them, the qualities, the energies become alive. They become active. Even in the Bible, you will see it said, the word I speak to you is alive and active. I'm going to stop there. You cannot be sleeping and be and be speaking a word that is alive and active. You need to be active in order to activate the active words. Every spoken word, every word written is alive. It's a living exactly. entity. Whether you are awake it or not, it's immaterial. Because you always hear me say potential. A potential, when I say somebody's potential, that is something that has the possibility and ability to become. Yes. So that potential, if you don't activate that potential, it is there, it becomes dormant. So yes. every word, every written, unwritten, they have potential to become. But it's only when you use them, apply them, activate them, then they be alive. But they have the potential to be alive. They are alive because they're entities, they're energy. After all, everything God did, it was through what? Spoken words. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Um, we will continue this uh, topic and we will make it a topic of a one program. So it's very important. I'm, I'm Maren Hera. Thank you very much for joining us. We've been wonderful. Uh, there is somebody who commented here. I don't know if I still see it. He said, um, oh, I, I, I didn't see that. Com I, I, let me see if I can see the comment they commented. Okay, he said, Madam, sense, sense will not kill you. <laughs> He will not kill me by his grace. <laughs> so that is I'm the very way it is. I'm very practical. What I mean by that is I am not that kind of person that come and discount something because maybe I'm not practicing it. But mm. anything I'm telling anybody, I have been through it. You are open for to every exactly. discussion. Exactly. So I continue to source knowledge. It's never enough. So I have come through a long way. I was a practicing Christian. When I was into Christianity, I was in depth. That's what, what I tell anybody. And even the Bible said it. Anything you want to do, do it with your whole heart. Mm. Then if you don't succeed, you can say, I tried. And you tried honestly. Then you can argue, I tried, but it didn't work. You it know? And warm. again, that is why you see sometimes when I say something, I say, I'm imagining. When I use that word, that means I have not tried that thing. I've not been exposed to that thing. I'm using my imagination. Because somebody who goes through that process or who have been through the process have a better knowledge than me. They went through it. I'm only imagining. I'm looking from outside. So mm. when I don't have anything against anybody practicing Christianity or any religion, but what I'm trying, one of my own advocacy is this. Let us be open-hearted. Study these books. And you find out that most of the time, the so-called people placed in high places are using it as or using them as instrument of slavery instead of using them for the purpose they are meant for. That's mm. my own argument. That is why you'll always hear me. I said, I believe there is a God. And I truly do. I'm not saying it lightly. I believe there's a spiritual dimension, not heaven or earth, like up above there. It's a dimension. It is real. Mm. You can go in there and come out there if you have the gift. Those people that genuine people that Ask yourself, how is Mazi able to make predictions they come to be? Mazi, Sampe Master, how is he able to? You go in there, some of us go consciously because we have a gift, we have the ability to manipulate these dimensions and go in there and consciously retrieve information. Some of us is when you are asleep, you go in that dimension because again, you have a unique gift and you go in there mm. and what you're observing there or what you're experiencing there are real and true. Even people that and tell some you... Some of them call it lucid dreaming. <laughs> even these people that... When, when you come to why, you know, where we are, Western civilization, somebody say, I discovered something. This is an, a knowledge, a thought that never came to you. How did this person able to get this information? From where? Because when you use the word discovery, you are talking about something that is already in existence. You were able to mm. go in and find it and bring it out. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm. Nobody has ever called and told you that. To tell, uh, nobody yeah, has ever yeah, come yeah. to tell you that I made this thing. They will say it's a discovery. Discovery. Yeah. So what Not they are telling you, they already acknowledge that these things are already in existence. 
They're only finding them. Even it's in the Bible. This is, again, another thing I'm bringing that our people are misplacing and misusing the Bible. The Bible, there's a place in the Bible that says that the things of the spirit are greater than the things in the physical. Mm. It's in the yeah, Bible. Right. I didn't write it. It's the same concept. If you are not able to have the ability, go into the spiritual realm, bring that information, bring it to the physical realm. Because there, there is no uh, past, there's no present, there's no future. Everything is right there. They play to you. Right there, you see it. That's prophecy. Mm. That discernment. That is why, like, Mayazi was saying something many, many years ago. He already foresaw them because at the time, I don't know how he receives his own, but at the time that dimension was exposed to him, he was able to see these things and he called them out. That's what it is. Because he has a gift. There's something in him that gives him that ability to design them, to get into that dimension, get this information, and then release it. He already seen them because they were there. They were existing at that time. But because, again, he had the ability to design, he knows that it's something that is yet to come. So, like I said, this is a, a one thing that I do that I'm not yet to come out publicly to start sharing. You're pushing me. That's why I'm kind of being careful. Uh, it's part of my life. But I'll leave it here. <laughs> Uh, we will keep. I uh, will keep pushing you until you. You are the so bad. <laughs> That's okay. Have a good night. When you get me there again, you know when I start saying this, I, I get intoxicated. I'm very you know, lady. Yeah, I'm not even in your in your Yeah, I'm not even man. I feel, but I feel like high. You know, it gives me a high, and you That's know, the way it, is. I, it That's makes the way me. It I speak is. fast. It makes it you makes intoxicated. Me, I, I don't want to stop. You know, because the information will be flowing as I'm just so yeah. I don't want to get in there because when I get in there, I might go late to work. You know, I get it, I get it, I get so, it. Thank you all for listening. God bless you all to continue to educate ourselves. Uh, the, this world we are in is a mystery. Um, and we continue to grow together by His grace. One day, one of you might be educating me. Thank you, God. Thank you all. God bless. Shalom. Great beer friends all over the world. This is where we are bringing this program to an end. Of course, we have done it and we are looking forward to continue on this path of truth, education, and enlightenment, bringing you to the path of knowledge of good and evil bringing you to the path of decolonization that is what we do because we are always going to use those things that they use to chain your mind to position your mind that it will never move we will always touch on everything that will make us free but until we meet again, stay safe and stay informed. Whichever way you are watching this program, make sure you like that program, share that program, subscribe, and follow that program. We are live on YouTube. We are live across Facebook platforms. Anywhere you are watching from, like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet again, bye-bye.